1981, The Evil Dead splattered its way into the world of cinema, directed by Sam Raimi. The controversial film was considered very edgy in its time, with many people criticising its use of heavy gore and violence, with some even branding the movie as misogynistic. And yet, despite all its criticisms, horror movie fans couldn't get enough of this gore fest which saw four young people staying in a cabin in the middle of the woods where they find the Necronomicon and after playing around with it must battle the evil of the undead. And the movie did not hold back in its shock value. I mean, you know you're watching a pretty hardcore film when it has a tree that wants to rape you. Evil Dead spawned off two sequels, a remake, and a recent TV series, and brought upon the arrival of Ash Williams, played by the legendary Bruce Campbell. The awkward and nerdy, and yet still cool as hell, anti-hero protagonist. Put on your shoelaces untidy. A character who has gone down to become a mainstream figure within pop culture. So it's time to get a little groovy as we take a look inside the Necronomicon and try to discover 10 things that we might not know about the Evil Dead. So, let's check it out. Number 10, Within the Woods. In order to try and interest film investors and producers in his Evil Dead project, Sam Raimi directed a short Super 8 movie called Within the Woods, of which is considered to be a prequel to Evil Dead. The movie even features Evil Dead's main star, Bruce Campbell, whose character was called, well, Bruce. Yeah, I guess he wasn't quite Ash yet. Eager to get his gore fest into the woods out in the public, Raimi convinced a movie theatre to screen the movie alongside the Rocky Horror Picture Show, which piqued an interest in the project, which eventually led to the creation of Evil Dead. I guess big things have small beginnings. Number 9. The Enigma of Ash's Last Name Although these days the character of Ash is known as Ash Williams, which was firmly established in the series' third entry slash spin-off, Army of Darkness, in the first two movies, the character is simply known as Ash. Well, this is because both Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell just couldn't agree on his last name. So not knowing what name to give him, I guess they just fought to hell with it. Let's just not give him one. Problem solved. I don't know, even though it's now firmly established in the lore that Ash's last name is Williams, I'd prefer not knowing. And just simply referring to him as Ash, it makes him more anonymous and just goes well with his anti-hero image. Number 8. The cabin used in Evil Dead has a real-life horror story connected to it. Sam Raimi disclosed that there were some truly terrifying real-life stories associated with the cabin and location used for Evil Dead. Many years prior, a little girl lived in the cabin with her mother and grandmother, and one night during a storm, she crawled into her mother's bed because she was scared, only to discover that her mum was indeed dead. The little girl then ran into her grandmother's room and climbed into bed with her, only to discover that the grandmother had also died in the night, leaving the terrified little girl screaming out into the rain. Raimi further explains that a family who lived in a farmhouse not too far from the cabin took in the little girl, and the little girl grew up to be an elderly woman and was known for wandering around the woods whenever there was thunderstorms and the film crew were even approached by members of the farm family whom were looking for the wandering old lady on the count that she had wandered off due to an approaching thunderstorm. But Raimi recollects that she was never found. Never mind Evil Dead, 
That itself can be its own horror film. Ooh. Number seven, Evil Dead was banned in the UK. Despite the fact that Evil Dead was the highest grossing videotape of 1983 in Great Britain, beating fellow slasher horror film The Shining, the powers that be deemed the Evil Dead unfit for public consumption, and thus the movie was banned in the UK and was added to the infamous Video Nasty list. The Video Nasty campaign was led by the Viewers Listeners Association and I'm generally a better person than you personality Mary Whitehouse who throughout the course of the 80s would be responsible for 72 movies getting banned, including titles such as I Spit in Your Grave, Driller Killer and Zombie 2. And of course, Evil Dead was added to that list. Research is taking place and it will show that these films not only affect young people, but I believe they affect adults as well. Well, hello, Mr. Fancy Pants. I got news for you, pal. You ain't leading but two things right now, Jack and shit. But thankfully, after spending some time in video nasty jail, Evil Dead was released without bail completely free of charges. To the delight of British horror movie fans, whom could have faced jail time if they had previously wanted to see it. I think that the fact that the movie was outlawed and banned just makes Evil Dead that bit more edgy and badass. However, if you can believe it, there are still some parts of the world where the movie is banned. Oh my god, really? Like, really? There are still some places where it's banned? Okay, just calm down, guys. Repeat after me. It is only a movie. It is not real. Number six, Stephen King helped the popularity of Evil Dead. Yep, due to its dark, gruesome nature and even certain bans, The Evil Dead was quite the controversial film back in the day, with many shocked cinema audiences not knowing what to make of it. After watching it, confused viewers were probably asking themselves should they be repulsed and outraged by what they saw, or should they just enjoy it for what it is? Well, one maestro of the horror genre was very vocal about his love for the movie. That was none other than Stephen King, whom absolutely loved Evil Dead and wrote a rave review of it. And those whom were behind the marketing of Evil Dead obviously wanted everyone to know the master of horror himself loves the Evil Dead. As a quote he used to describe the movie was even in the trailer. I like to think that having Stephen King's blessings made people okay with the movie and made people more at ease with seeing it and enjoying it. And thus, King probably helped the Evil Dead become a massive cult phenomenon. Cool. King also helped the sequel, Evil Dead 2, get into motion by getting his friend and big time producer Dino De Laurentiis on board the project. Number five, Ash's awesome comic book crossovers. <laughs> In recent years, the character of Ash has exploded on comic book pages, as his ghoulish adventures have been fervoured on the printed page, especially through his Army of Darkness series. And in his comic book career, we have seen Ash come face to face with other legendary icons, such as Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees. And I think that watching Ash doing battle with Freddy and Jason is every horror enthusiast's ultimate dream. Ash has even teamed up with Darkman. I guess it would make sense for Ash to join forces with Darkman. I mean, after all, both characters are created by Sam Raimi, so yeah, I guess it totally makes sense. But some of the crossovers have gotten pretty random, such as Ash doing a Wizard of Oz crossover, Ash joining forces with Xena Warrior Princess. Um, okay and even the ex-president himself, Barack Obama. You know, to say these comic books were pretty weird would actually be an understatement. Who would have thought that just a simple cabin in the woods would lead to adventures with Xena Warrior Princess and Obama? Oh well, either way, the comics are pretty awesome. Number four, Broken Jaw Shenanigans. 
It has been something of a legend over the years that while making Evil Dead, Campbell broke his jaw when Raimi rammed a camera into his face in order to get one of the final shots of the movie. But by Campbell's own admission, that was just a joke that he and Raimi started. And what was intended to just be a minor harmless giggle took off from there. However, that doesn't mean the shoot of the movie was completely free from problems. Having been made on a shoestring budget, with very little time or resources, the actors involved in the film were injured at some stage of the shoot. In fact, sometimes the production would run out of money, which would cause huge breaks in between filming, which could last months, in which Raimi would have to set out to raise more money in order to do more filming. In fact, Raimi had more or less been working 24-7, and had exhausted himself so much that according to visual effects artist Bart Pierce, Raimi even collapsed on the set, in which an ice bucket had to be poured over his head to wake him up. In other words, jokes about Campbell's jaw aside, The Evil Dead was one long and hard and generally unpleasant film to shoot. It really is no wonder why, according to Bruce Campbell, real marijuana was used on the set. Because my heart is jackhammering like a quarterback on prom night. And yet the end results was totally worth it. Number three, Evil Dead's alternative titles. It's not uncommon for movies to have different titles in their early days of production. And Evil Dead is no exception, as originally, the violent splatterfest was called The Book of the Dead. Which is understandable, as it's a reference to the Necronomicon, which is a huge vital part of the movie's story. But what's really baffling is the movie's other working title of These Bitches Are Witches. Yep, you heard correctly. <sighs> These bitches are witches. Oh my god! I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Evil Dead and all, and I think that Sam Raimi is a terrific director, but my word, what a terrible title! Number two, Evil Dead the Musical. Yeah, just like American Psycho, Evil Dead also got its own musical, and just like American Psycho, the fact that Evil Dead got a musical is totally weird. Because of course, you think undead zombies and you think Broadway, right? Yeah, looking good. Looking sweet. Uh huh. The Canadian rock concert was first put together in 2003 and promises a fun time of zombies, blood, chainsaws, and singing. Well, if that doesn't get horror fanatics into the theater, then nothing will. Let's put it this way. If you've always been a fan of Evil Dead, but always thought there wasn't enough singing and dancing in it, then finally your golden opus of happiness is here. Number one, there was going to be an Ash vs. Jason movie. Oh wow, just imagine how awesome it would have been to see Ash and Jason share the same movie. I honestly would have preferred to see this than a Jason vs. Freddy movie. At least Jason and Ash are polar opposites. Supposedly the movie never took off, because the powers that be didn't know what to do with the fate of Ash. They didn't know if he should live or die, and if he was to die, what epic death could they give him? So out of confusion, Ash was dropped from the movie and the project became Jason Goes to Hell instead. But the Necronomicon and the Skull Dagger from the Evil Dead movie still feature in Jason Goes to Hell suggesting that the two franchises exist in the same universe, and that one day, there might just be that crossover we all want. Meanwhile, we have the epic comic, Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash, The Nightmare Warriors, for all those who just need this horror mishmash in their lives. Well, that was my blood and guts looking to the evil dead. Let's hope it never gets banned again and that we are going to see plenty more of Ash and his epic square chin in the future. And please guys, if you ever find the Book of the Dead in the middle of the woods, just don't touch it, okay? Just leave it alone, put it down, just walk away, it's just not worth it. Trust me, look at that. You just don't need that stress in your life, trust me. You know, what with the zombies and all.
Anyway, see ya.